we have a consummate academician, a trained clinical psychologist, and a licensed psychotherapist. Somebody I have a wealth of respect for. He was the first Secretary General of the Employee Assistant Program in Nigeria. He's an active member of EAP Africa. I have the pleasure in introducing to us uh, Dr. David Ibukwe, who will be leading today's discourse on goal setting and personal mastery. Dr. Ibukwe, you are heartily welcome to this program. You may- Thank you very much, sir. The reins of event, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, good morning once again, everyone. So I'm going to be talking about goal setting and uh, personal mastery today. And be before I start, it's, it's important to note that today's interaction is um, going to be very open. If you have any question at any point in time, kindly just um, raise your hand or type, uh, type it out, and then we will respond to the question as we go on. I'm talking about goal setting and personal mastery. I always like to start my presentation by putting up this interesting quote by Albert Einstein. He said, we cannot solve our problems with the same level of thinking that created them. We cannot solve our problems with the same level of thinking that created them. And whatever problem we have in life, whatever issue it is we are um, battling with, we can't solve them with the yeah. same level of thinking that got us to that place. And then Antonio Marcado said something very interesting some years ago. Marcado said, travelers, there are no paths. Paths are made by walking. Paths are not made by talking. Paths are not made by um, hoping. Paths are not made by believing. I was going to say paths are not made by praying, but I'll have to add by praying alone. Paths are made by walking. This is 2023 and we've been given a blank slate, also called Tabla Rasa. It's up to us to write something on this plate, this slate rather, that we've been given, this blank slate. Paths, once again, are made by walking, not by talking, not by hoping, not even by just believing. They are made by walking. We're gonna be talking about goal setting and personal mastery. So it means that we have to go out there, we have to set the goals, we have to ensure that we do our part towards ensuring that the goals are met. Paths, once again, are made by walking. A few questions for us to ponder. Number, number one question is this. What goals have I set for myself? What goals have I set for myself? I want you to take a minute to think about this. What goals have I set for myself? Another question I want us to point is, am I disciplined towards pursuing my goals? Am I disciplined towards pursuing my goals? A third question for our consideration is, how do I enhance my personal mastery? We're going to be exploring some of these concepts as we go on. So what are we going to cover within the time that we have? Goals, goal setting, and of course, we will explore some other themes, personal mastery, personal growth, and learning. And we'll also look at some tools for enhancing personal mastery for goal getting. We'll look at journaling, um, learning. Of course, we'll also look at stillness, which is extremely difficult for some people to practice, but we're going to be taking a look at that as we move on. Goals, goal setting, and other themes. I'll pause here for a minute to receive feedback from, um, from us on what we think um, a goal is. Anybody? 
Let's just take two responses as we move on. What is a goal? A goal is a target. Oh, thank you. I see um, Adeto Kumbo. A goal is a target. Any other person? A goal is a target. Okay. And a goal is also seen as a specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time-bound outcome that a person or organization hopes to achieve. That ties together with what Adetokumbo just said about a goal being a target, something we want to achieve. It is a desired result or target. Getting back to the same thing she mentioned, a target that an individual or group works towards. A goal can be either short term, medium term, and of course, long term. And then it can be related to different areas of life, such as career, education, personal development, health, and relationships. We are going to be touching some of these areas as we go on with this conversation this morning. One important thing to note is this. Goals help people and organizations to focus their efforts and resources and also helps them to measure their progress towards achieving their target or their desired outcome. So if you don't have a goal, it will be difficult to know what you are trying to, to pursue towards or what you are trying to get at the end of the day. So a goal is a target and it is also a desired result that we want to achieve. Before we go on, we are going to perform a little task as um, our revered venerable mentioned, I am a school teacher, I'm a class teacher. So once in a while, I try to give people tasks to perform just to um, be on the same page with them and to know if it is the same thing we are exploring. Look at the screen now and you will see a self audit for goal setting, a self audit for goal setting. So we're going to be auditing ourselves when it comes to goal setting, looking at what we've done, what we intend to do and how we intend to do that by responding to a few questions. Um, it will take like three minutes to get through this particular activity and then we'll share our results as we move forward. Self-audit for goal setting. So you respond using nearly always, sometimes, and then rarely to the questions. We are looking at self-audit exactly. Okay, the following questions, um, they are for your consideration and you respond using three res either of um, the three response options there, nearly always one, two sometimes, and then three rarely. Nearly always for one, two sometimes, and then three rarely. So let's respond to the questions and then come back with our responses. So the questions are, when I set a goal, I write it down, I describe my goal in specific measurable terms. I often visualize my goal, and then my goals are achievable. I set realistic deadlines for completing my goals, and then I break a large goal into manageable units. I look for potential problems that may keep me from reaching my goals. I take action to remove or minimize those potential problems and I review progress towards my goals on a regular basis. I know the personal reward of reaching my goals. Just put um, one number beside each of the questions highlighted. Okay, so um, does anyone want to share what they got? We have one nearly always, two sometimes, and then three rarely. I got a 14. Yeah, excellent. Anyone else? Let's take one more and then we move on. Oh, someone got 15, someone got 17. HHE 15, Bernard 17, Eniton 16. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so if you um, scored between 24 to 30, excellent job of um, setting effective goals. And if you scored 18 to 23, um, well, you are on your way to effective goal setting. Uh, you have to review your 
low scores or other scores. And if you score anything, if you scored rather anything less than um, or below 18, it means you are in the right place and you have a whole lot to um, take home from our interaction today. So this is a good place to start when it comes to um, setting a goal. First is you audit yourself and know where you are. Like I said, from um, below 18, it means you are, you are in the right place. And we move on to, to the other aspects of goal setting. What we're going to do is to briefly look at certain terms that tend to be used when you are talking about goal setting. May I say that the people tend to confuse goal setting with some of these things or goals with some of these things. And I will touch on a few of them just to um, be on the same, for us all to be on the same page. First is the concept of desires. Desires are things you want to accomplish, acquire, or experience that are greatly or completely dependent on the cooperation of other people, events, or circumstances. It means that desires are not within your control. We often see people taking desires as goals. No, they are not goals. They are just things that you want to experience. Oh, I desire to head my organization. It's not a goal, it's just a desire. I desire to own a Bentley. It's just a desire. And it is dependent on the cooperation of other people on events, on circumstances. Well, I, I wouldn't want to say that people who teach should not be thinking of um, owning a Bentley. But of course, they are allowed to desire such things. If I wanted to drive a Bentley, of course, going into business would be a very good um, way of um, exploring that. Um, it's also important to note that goals are within our control while desires are not. Of greater importance is the fact that one can use one's desires to set one's um, goals. Now I want to, uh, this is just a, a, an example. It's just something I'm saying for the um, um, particular context that we are in. If I desire something, all I need to do is to sit and begin to make plans regarding how to achieve it. And that is, that now takes me to the realm of setting goals so as to be able to achieve that particular desire. Apart from desire, we also have things such as purpose, vision, and so forth. We'll touch on two of them. But before we do that, it's important that we know that purpose has to do with why. Why? Why am I here? What am I here for? Purpose answers the question, why? A sense of why I am alive. Where, while vision, answers the question, what? What do I do? How do I achieve this particular, uh, sorry, what do I do in order to get to the reason why I am here? That now takes us to the next level, which is our goal. How do I begin to achieve the what and fulfill the why? So we move from purpose and then go to vision and then go to our goals. That's how to achieve what it is that we want to achieve. Our vision is what we are seeing, our destination. How to get to that destination is the goal that we now begin to set. And then just to clarify the terms further, purpose is when you know and understand what you were born to accomplish. A whole lot has been written on it. A whole lot has been said about it. There are tons of literature regarding purpose. And I encourage us to explore some of them as, uh, many, as, much, as many of them as we can. Then we go to vision. Vision means to see something coming into view as if it were already there. Vision comes from purpose. Whenever you talk about vision, the name that really comes to mind is someone like Miles Moreau who wrote a whole lot on vision and then purpose. He told a story of, about a young girl who went on a who went on a boat ride 
I think, with the father. And he said, as the people were looking at the view, the, the child couldn't see much. So she now talked on the father and asked the father um, to, to help her see what they were seeing and enjoying during the boat um, trip, I believe. And then the father carried the young girl on his shoulders and the girl now exclaimed, dad, I can see further than, um, further than my eyes can see. Meaning, and, and according to, to him, this, this sort of wraps up what vision is all about. The ability to see further than our eyes can see, our optical eyes. And um, there are so many uh, things reading on vision. But our main, main concern today is on goals. There are steps necessary to fulfill your vision. There are clear markers that will take you to where you need to go. Goal setting is the process of identifying things or the results you want to achieve in your life with a determined time, um, a time frame. And of course, those time frames are set there to help you to achieve the goals. I will run through some important benefits of goal setting. Maybe when you get the slides, you might want to um, review them and um, think about some of them, but I'll just run through them. It helps you live a life um, with a direction. If you don't have a goal, anywhere will look like your destination. Another benefit of goal setting is that it helps us to make remarkable progress in life. It also gives us better chances of living the future that we desire. Goals can motivate us to higher achievements. You, you set a goal, you achieve it, and then you are able to set another one and move on in life, winning as you go on. Of course, goals tend to give us more personal satisfaction and confidence. It helps us improve our purpose of attention. It increases our performance level. Apart from that, it also assists us to overcome the habit of procrastination. It helps us also to manage our time effectively. It enhances our chances of living a stress-free life. It also facilitates clarity when we are making decisions. You have set a goal to become a manager in your organization. That would make you not to wake up one morning and then you know, leave the organization because you have not achieved the goal that you set for yourself within that particular organization. It also makes us to be more accountable to ourselves. It enables us to measure our progress and helps transform seemingly insurmountable mountains into walkable hills. So it helps us, goal setting helps us to surmount things that we felt we would not be able to surmount before. But there are mistakes people make when it comes to goal setting. The first one is they, they don't anticipate or appreciate failure. Sometimes when we set goals and we're not able to achieve them, it tends to teach us what not to do again. But people don't appreciate that fact. And then sometimes people set other people's goals. As parents, we are tempted to set our, uh, our children's goals. As parents, we are also tempted to set our spouse's goals, not our goals. So most times people find, it, find that they are setting other people's goals, not their own goals. And then not reviewing your progress is another mistake you want to avoid. Not reviewing your progress. Progress tends to tell us, to show us where we are, tend to help us to know what to do next. Apart from that, sometimes people set what we call negative goals. I don't want to be late anymore. That is a negative goal. You are not going to be able to achieve it because it is set in the negative. Um, having been a psychologist for um, over two decades, I can tell you that if you enter into therapy with a negative goal, you are not going to achieve anything. So what is important is that you enter into any situation, whether it's goal setting, life, or whatever it is you are um, trying to achieve, you enter it setting a very positive goal. I will lose 20 kg this year. That is a very positive goal. I will make 
a hundred million this year. That is a very positive goal. And then another mistake you want to avoid in goal setting is not planning how to accomplish set goals. Someone once said, P, 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 P. Proper planning prevents poor performance. Proper planning prevents poor performance. Sometimes people just set goals and then they don't make plans how they are going to achieve the set goals. Then not committing your goals to writing is another mistake people make and that you want to avoid. Once you set a goal, it's extremely important to commit it to writing. Have it written somewhere so as to be able to check and track your progress as you go on. And sometimes people also set too many goals um, and then set goals in only one life area. Sometimes they just set goals when it comes to their career and then forget about their family life. They forget about their relationships. They forget about some other areas um, of their lives. And that now begins to impact negatively on other areas and they, even after achieving that particular goal, they find that they are not happy. So that's a common mistake that people make that you might want to avoid uh, making when it comes to goal setting. Let's look at the, 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 the basics of goal setting. This is goal setting 101. And um, we are going to use a scenario, someone who's trying to get a promotion, someone who's trying to get a job. I know that doesn't represent um, some of us here, but the whole idea is for us to be able to take this particular um, idea and put it wherever we have found ourselves. So in goal setting 101, the first thing we want to do is to define the goal. Define the goal. In defining the goal, we have to ask ourselves, are there steps I will take in achieving this particular goal? For instance, a goal um, that has to do with um, getting a promotion in 2023. You have to ask yourself, are there constraints? You have to also ask yourself, am I assuming things or am I taking things lightly regarding this particular goal? Am I assuming things? Are there constraints? Yes, I want a promotion in 2023. Who are the people in the same organization who would be going for that particular promotion that I want to go for? Am I able to, am I able to, to uh, compare notes with them so that we are all on the same page as we move forward? And then another thing when it comes to defining a goal is to ask yourself, do I have a why I need to achieve this goal? Do I have a reason why I need to achieve this goal? And this you know, brings us to the, the, the fact that most times when people pursue goals and they don't have a reason for pursuing that particular goal, it is difficult to achieve that particular goal. Someone mentioned something um, that he called the golden cycle, cycle method of goal setting. And he talked about the why. The why is the motive, the reason for, for pursuing a particular goal or a particular thing. And then the next step we want to explore is breaking the goal down. We are talking about getting a promotion. We're talking about getting a job. How do we begin to break this particular big goal that has to do with getting a promotion in 2023 down? Well, a few things for consideration as follows. First, you might want to research. Secondly, you might want to explore your um, network. And then thirdly, self-development. Another thing to do when you have put all of these things out there, that's when you've broken down that particular big goal of getting promoted in 2023, is to have sub-goals under the big goal. So under research, since I want to get promoted in 2023, under research, First thing I want to do is to review the organization's promotion criteria. Am I qualified? Look at the promotion criteria. People who have gotten to this level, what did they have that I don't have? What um, did they do that I'm not doing or I should be doing? Apart from that, you might want to follow, follow promotion announcements and research, um, and of course, research um, open positions within that organization that you are in, and then another organization 
that you want to go to. Apart from research, there is also need, extreme need to update your resume and of course your cover letter for application. If these things are done, whether sequentially or um, in a different order, it means you've been able to at least capture some of the key things that you need in terms of research when it comes to breaking down your goal of getting promoted in 2023 into sub goals. Then the next thing you want to think of is networking. Yes, I want to get to the next level. It's now important for me to start mingling with people, start mm. making contacts um, within the organization, have a contact list. I work in the academia. If I need that, I have to at least be in good terms with my dean, with my head of department, with um, other uh, professors within the department, because my, 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 my documents will get to them at one point or the other. And it is, of course, when it gets to them, they have to look at the documents positively if I um, have a very good relationship with them. Apart from that, I have to also start making a, um, start setting up a biweekly information interview. Of course, in organizations, it's important that is done. You know, set up an interview with someone who has been there before, and then the individual is able to able to um, guide you adequately. The challenge with this is the challenge why some people refuse to grant people this information interview is that people, when they are supposed to be having a formal or um, a benign information interview tend to turn it into a job hunting process. It's easy for me to sit and interact with a younger colleague on what to do and what not to do when I know that this individual is not going to turn it into um, something else like, why don't you find me a place in the organization when I've already told you there is no, um, there is no space. So setting up a bi-weekly or weekly information interview is extremely important. When you talk to someone who is at that level or who, um, who is on a higher level to guide you through the process, that's extremely, extremely important. And of course, we go to the area of self-development. Self-development, that's where you start taking a class in the area of um, the proposed promotion or you volunteer to work in um, that particular area so as to get hands-on experience regarding what it is you want to achieve. And then another thing to do in terms of self-development, because we don't want to be at the same level that we um, were previously. We want to get to a higher level in terms of our qualification, our qualifications. They, it used to be said many years ago, that um, it used to be said many years ago that when you have a degree that um, you are able to use it for a long time. These days, people now say that the half-life of a degree is about six months, um, um, one year. After that, what you have learned tend to become extremely obsolete. I'm in the academia and I can tell you that things tend to evolve very rapidly. Before you know what is happening, that thing you are thinking is um, the main thing now becomes obsolete. So, I want a promotion. Another thing I need to do is to go out there and try to get another, another um, certification, another thing that will give me a very good advantage. After this particular step that has to do with breaking down the tasks or the goal that we want to achieve, then it's also important to have a flow chart. It's important to have a flow chart. And let's say, recall when we started, I said, that we're going to look at goal setting 101, vis-a-vis job search or getting a promotion. So let's look at it um, in terms of a job search. Yes, I want a job. I want to move from where I am to another level or to another university or to a different organization. I'm tired of teaching and um, I can't get a Bentley. I'm now just being trying to be, I can get a Bentley as a teacher. So I have to get to another organization where I can get enough money to buy myself a Bentley since I want to drive a Bentley. Really, I don't want to drive a Bentley, but I'm just using that, using that as an instance. What do I do? First thing I have to do is to prepare that my resume. Dust it, put it together based on industry standard. And um, based on industry standard, I have to write a cover letter. 
based on industry standard. I have to, uh, I have a CV and then I have a resume. Uh, our dear venerable, he has seen both of them. I think for the CV, it's about 22 pages thereabout for my CV. Um, because we have publications, you have committee membership, you have, I mean, different things you don't need for a regular workplace, like an organization. So he has also seen the two-page document that I compressed all of the information I put in the 20-page or 22-page document. So we, if you are going to get a job in an organization, it's extremely important to research, of course, industry standard when it comes to preparing your CV and all of those things. That would have to be part of the flow chart. Then after that, we move on to the next level, which is using online and offline job platform, social media, um, staffing agencies, industry meetings, um, job boards. We have things like Indeed and some other websites that people use these days. You know, I've had um, colleagues who got jobs um, outside of the country just using some of these online platforms. Then the next step within the flow chart is to review newspaper adverts. Many years ago, when we were looking for um, placements, we used to get the, the, I think, Tuesday and Thursday guide uh, because there you would see adverts and so forth. And then you want, might want to check promotion um, announcements for job vacancies. Why is this important? It's actually important because, um, yes, I want to go to the next level. But what if that position is not vacant? So that's why it's important to check promotion announcements for job vacancies. And of course, another thing you might want to do is to also compare notes with people, um, to with your network to see if people are leaving their jobs. Oh yes, I want to get to the next level. If somebody is leaving a particular position, what do you do? You, you just apply for that particular position and you are able to, to move. On. So the next, the next um, thing we might want to do is to check friends and family members and other net that, that we have. And it's important we check them because um, if we don't check them, we might be losing very important. And then part of our flow chart is to have um, a goal to apply for at least eight jobs per month. What do we mean by eight jobs per month? Of course, it means that we want two, two jobs per a week, two jobs per week, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we have our eight jobs per month. So moving from the um, research flow chart for job search, another thing we want to do is to um, make a schedule. It's important we make a schedule. For instance, for this, our job search goal, how do we make a schedule? We have to have a to-do list for proposed job searches within a particular timeline to-do list. I'm going to do X, Y, Z. This is how I'm going to do it. This is when I'm going to do it. This is where I'm going to do it. We also have to have a list of organizations that we've applied to, and then a, lead, a list of possible leads that we want to talk to um, regarding that particular search that we are conducting. If we don't have this lead, uh, for, for instance, one time I heard a story about someone who applied twice to a particular organization with two different CVs and um, two different um, cover, cover um, letters. It's just that they were able to identify it because of some key information. So you want to be able to track what you are doing, where you are doing, how you are doing, where you are doing, and then why you are doing it. And it's also important to enter and block job search activities on your calendar. Have a daily plan, have a weekly plan, have a monthly plan regarding what you want to do in terms of um, the schedule for your job search. And it's also important to analyze your risks. Risk analysis is extremely, extremely important. Now, when it comes to risks, we have two things. One, we have the threats and we have the opportunities. The threats are the things we want to avoid. We don't want to have any business with the threats, if it has nothing to do with ameliorating the threats. But we want to embrace the opportunities around us. The threats, what are the threats? I want to go to the next level. 
But there is another qualified person there trying to get that same position. And I will um, just share a personal story um, regarding this. I'm applying for a position with my head of department. My head of department is about the same age as my, my dad, 70 something. Yes, 76, 78, thereabouts. And then I just noticed that he might not feel very comfortable sharing notes or comparing notes with me regarding where we are going. So one day I went to the office in the morning and we were just having a conversation. And I told him plainly, you know, this position I'm going for, I don't even care about it. It is, it is what it is. If it comes good, if it doesn't, I'm not bothered, but I know it will come. And what are the things do you, uh, like, that you think I should do in order to get to this um, particular level since you've um, um, been there before, tried it out before? And then immediately he saw I wasn't a threat, so to speak. He started sharing information with me. Oh, you do this, you do this, you do this. Oh, at this point, I will tell you. At this point, I will tell you what to do. At this point, I will tell you what to do. If I hadn't um, cleared the air, if I hadn't um, tried to bring him to my side, I would have been stuck. Of course, I would have been there and then I will hear one day them announcing his um, um, elevation to the next level without knowing how it happened. So what do you do with your threats? That's the question. What do you do with your threats? Because the next level, as we are, uh, uh, the next level is to analyze the risks. And I said that the risks comprise of two things, threats and opportunities. So first thing you have to do is to identify the risks. What are the risks with regard to this particular um, goal that I have outlined? And then you want to begin to filter and rank them. What are the ones that are very threatening? What are the risks that I can handle? And then you begin to develop your response strategies. Response strategies for opportunities and threats risk. All you need to do is to accept. So fine, this is a risk. Okay, fine, I accept the risk. Then let me see what I can do about it. But if you are now faced with only threats, there are a few things you might want to do. First is you will try to avoid it. As we say in general parlance, you jump and pass. The other thing you might want to do is to transfer that particular threat. How do I mean? Move that particular threat away from you by either adjusting your goal or deciding to, okay, fine, if my head of department is not going to work with me towards this, I'll leave it for next year. Let him go this year, then I'll, I'll, I'll um, come in next year to get the same thing, since it's, it's a continuum. Then what can we do again? We try to mitigate it, to reduce it, so that it doesn't serve as a threat anymore. So what did I do? I mitigated the threat. Is it still a threat? Yes, he is. And I hope he's not listening. But I tried to mitigate that threat by telling him, I am not at war with you. Let's work together to get to this particular destination that we both need to get to. What are the strategies for opportunity risks? Well, first strategy is since we love opportunities, we embrace opportunities, we like them. What do we do? First thing we want to do is to enhance the risk. Another thing we might want to do is to exploit it, to use it to our own advantage. Another thing we might want to do is to share it. Yes, I am younger. Yes. Another thing I can do is to help other people who are younger around me to move to the next level so that as I move up, I have people who will be able to work with me. The next step that we have to get to in terms of our goal setting 101 is simply to get to work. Remember, we started by saying you first define the goal, you define it. After defining it, you break it down into sub goals. After breaking it down into sub goals, you have to have a flow chart regarding how you want to achieve it. Apart from that, you make a schedule, you have a business meeting with yourself. And then after that step four of making a schedule, you analyze your risks. After analyzing your risks, the next thing is 
you get to work in order to achieve your goal. I'm, I'm sure someone is saying, now I know what I'm going to do, when I'm going to do it, where I'm going to do it, how I'm going to do it, as well as why I am going to do it. Let's move on to another um, important concept that has to do with setting clear objectives with regards to or setting clear achievable goals. But before we touch on that, it's important to note that Zig Ziglar once said that a goal that is properly set is halfway reached. Les Brain said that your goals are your roadmaps that guide you and show you what is possible for your life. While Jim Ron once mentioned that there are no telling what you can do when you are inspired by goals, there is no telling what you can do when you believe in them, and there is no telling what will happen when you act upon your goals. How do you set achievable goals? Well, various people have come up with various things, and this is extremely amusing. We started by talking about smart goals, smart goals, make your goals specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and then time specific, uh, sorry, and attainable and time specific, relevant and time specific. That is the smart. After some time, people now said, don't make your goals smart. Make your goals smarter. You said, wow, that's nice. They now said, make your goals specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, um, time specific. And then you have to add two key things, add, evaluate, and then revise. And then after some time, some people now came up with another third um, or the third, um, the third protocol you might want to follow when it comes to goals or certain clear achievable goals. They said we must make it specific, we must make it measurable, we must make it um, attainable, we must make it relevant, we must make it time specific. And apart from time specific, we must make it emotionally sustainable. And that sounds really good. But apart from emotionally sustainable, we must make our goals um, strategized. Apart from that, we must also make our goals uh, we must also be able to transfer. That's the last T with regard to smartest. That's the last T. We must try to transfer our goals to the subconscious. And having said that, I think um, after evaluating the smart, the smart protocol, the smarter protocol, and the smartest protocol, I think I like the smarter one better than the smartest and the smart one. So it means that as you are making your goal, you have to ensure that it is specific. It is very specific. Recall we said getting a job into 2023. Then you have to be able to measure it. How do you measure it? Getting a job or getting a promotion. In order to measure it, you have to be able to quantify it in terms of something that you can hold on to at the end of the day. And then it should be something that is attainable. It should be something that is relevant to you. Of what use is getting a promotion when I'm not going to stay in the organization? Of what use is getting a promotion when it is not going to move me to the next level after that particular promotion? And then you evaluate. We talk about monitoring and evaluation. It's important we're able to look at the goal at every point in time to ensure that we are moving towards where we want to get to. And then next thing we want to do is to revise our goal. We have to be able to revise it. Once in a while, we go back to look at what um, we've put down and look at it vis-a-vis -vis our current reality. If it has nothing to do with it, we go back and make some adjustments in order to be able to move forward. Each of these things must have very tangible actionable or action steps that we follow. Next, we go to the life areas we need to set goals in. This is extremely interesting to me and important to me um, because a few years ago, I used to teach a course called uh, vocational behavior, psychological or vocational behavior. That is the psychology of work. And I taught it for a long time. Uh, in a different university. I used to do this with my students, setting a 10-year life plan. And I've been receiving very positive feedback regarding it. You have to set goals. Let's say we are setting a 10-year life plan. 
This is 2023. Our 10 year life plan would be from 2023 to 2033. That is 10 years. And I'm sure I always do this with people. If you look at 2013, that's 13, uh, 10 years ago, and you look at that particular year, you'll be able to identify a few things you did in 2013. And interestingly, that's also how you will look at 2033, when it is 2033, and be pointing out some things you used to do in 2023, including having this conversation today with me. So why not just project to 2033 or even project further than 2033, project to 2043, have a 20-year life plan, have a 25-year life plan, so that when you get to that place, you would look back and be happy at the end of the day. So the areas we might want to explore are the spiritual, um, is our spiritual life, our ministry life, family relational life, our health and fitness, our educational personal development, our career, occupational financial investment, real estate or infrastructure, societal impact and legacy. These are some areas we might want to exhibit, um, we might want to look at. And then in looking at them, we should be able to say in 10 years time, in 2033, this is how I want to be in terms of my health. I want to be extremely healthy. I want to be very strong. I want to be weighing 60 kg or 65 kg. The way to do that is to plan for it from 2023. And if you want to do that, we have to begin to break all of these long, go, uh, long goals that we have in all of these areas into small, small achievable fragments or small sub goals. For instance, our spiritual goal, how do we break it down into one year go. We can say, yes, this year, I'm going to bring order into my life by avoiding the life of sin for people who are religious. Or I want to commit, uh, I, or I commit to read my Bible and pray for half an hour each day. That is a commitment. That is a goal that one can set when it comes to one's spiritual life. In your ministry, I will enroll as a church worker and serve God with my gifts and talents. I will be a disciple. I'll be a model of Christ in the marketplace. That is in your workplace, you will be a model of Christ. That is best, an example of a goal to set in your ministry. And if you want to be a model of Christ, you have to now break it down into some goals, just as we mentioned earlier. In your family or relational goal, you might want to set a goal or set, set some, uh, goals like, I'll model Christ to my children. I will invest in my children's education. I'm committed to marriage for life. So I will treat my spouse with respect and appreciation. That is how to set goals within the family relational aspect. Of course, in the health fitness area, you can set goals like I'll exercise three times a week. I will eat healthy. I'll do my annual checkup. I'll treat any illness and adhere to my drug reg regimen. I'll rest well. Rest is extremely needful. So it's important we make goals to rest well. We can also set within our educational personal development such uh, goals as follows. I will start a postgraduate degree. Yes, I want a promotion, but to get to this level I want to get, I need a different degree or I need another degree. Start a postgraduate degree. I'll read one good book a month. I'll enroll for a professional course. These are some examples of goals to set within the educational personal development aspect of um, one's life. What of the career and occupational aspects? I'll become a model employee. I'll be the best manager in my company. I'll set my own business or my own side hustle, as we call it. That's um, something one might want to explore in the within the career occupational aspect. What of the financial investment aspect of our lives? I'll pay my first fruit faithfully and pay my tithes regularly. I will save and invest at least 10% of my income. I'll prepare a will. I'll prepare a will. I'll prepare a will, extremely needful. I will work towards becoming financially independent by discussing with a financial advisor. These are sub goals to set, uh, examples of sub goals to set in the financial investment aspect of our lives. Of course, we also have another aspect, the real estate or infrastructure goals. For instance, I'll buy a house, I'll invest in real estate company or in a real estate company. There are so many of them around now, you put in your money and then they, they help you um, turn it around. I'll invest in an acre of land, I'll lay the foundation for my house. These are some um, goals to set within the area of um, real estate or infrastructure. 
And then, after we have set all of these goals, we are going to sit down and ask and reflect on what we want to be in 10 years from now, that is in 2023. These are these all of these areas. Having finished setting the goals, there are some habits that are necessary for us to focus on when we are setting our goals or when we are getting our goals in goal getting. COVID 2020 highlighted some of the habits, the judicious use of our mental energy. We don't want to spread our mental energy everywhere. We want to focus on key things that will help us to achieve our goals. We also want to refrain from all negative thoughts. Part of what we do when people come to us for treatment with regard to depression is to help them to change their thought process from negative to positive. So another habit to want to inculcate as you pursue your goals in this 2023 is to reframe all of your negative thoughts into positive thoughts and then abstain from thinking negatively. It's extremely, extremely important to do that. That can't be overemphasized. And then habit three is you have to work towards um, established goals. You don't want to just write the goals and leave them. You want to work towards them. And another habit you want to inculcate is to reflect on your progress. You have to always go back and check your goals. Sometimes people write goals and then they dump the goals. They don't do anything with them. It is not helpful by any means. So reflecting and checking your progress is extremely important. It will give you the impetus to move forward. And then you have to um, also try to tolerate discomfort. In psychology, we talk about distress tolerance. That is a skill. It's a skill to learn to know how to tolerate discomfort. The goal is not going to achieve itself. As you are trying to achieve it, you are going to face difficulties. And I'm not saying this negatively. It's a fact of life. So when you face all of those difficulties, you have to be able to tolerate them and not allow them overwhelm you or inundate you. And then another habit you want to inculcate um, as you move towards um, getting your goals is being grateful. You have to be grateful. You know, grateful for where you are when you are looking at your progress, grateful for where you want to get to. There are so many um, studies that have shown that gratitude plays a very good role when it comes to have maintaining good mental health, and you don't want to play with that. So being grateful is a key skill you want to, or habit you want to adopt as you move towards getting your goals this 2023. And then you have to be able to balance emotions and logic. This is extremely key. Sometimes people find it difficult to balance emotions and logic. Don't allow your emotions to overwhelm you. You know, don't allow it to overwhelm you. Sometimes you get into a situation that people would want to, um, to exploit your emotional aspect. I'm being very careful with regard to the examples I'm giving um, uh, on this, because uh, there are some things that one would say and it might want to um, touch, uh, it might touch people negatively. But what I want to say is that you, you want to look at your emotions and balance it with logic. Don't allow your emotions to rule you. Don't allow it to rule you too much as you are trying to get towards your goal. And it's, Insidious example would be don't allow your quest for um, immediate gratification to take over your life as you move towards your goal. In terms of logic, you have to evaluate things. Don't over-evaluate things. Don't also allow your logic, that's the reverse. Don't allow your logic to take over your emotions. You have a hundred thousand and then you have committed to saving to saving um, 100,000 a month. And the child is sick. Don't allow that logic of, I must achieve my goal. I must achieve my goal to over overwhelm you. Someone needs that money. Give it to them if you are able to. So don't allow your logic to overrule your emotions. And then don't allow your emotions to overrule your logic. You have to balance it at some point. And then the eighth habit you might want to adopt is living according to your values living according to your values. We all have values. What do you value in life? And that ties together with our purpose, with our vision. You have to, on a daily basis, live according to all of those values you have for yourself. And apart from that, 
you have to also tie your value together with any goal that you are pursuing. Yes, I want to build five houses. I want to own an estate in Abuja this year. But if that estate is going to mean embezzling my organization's money, then what do I need it for? It's going to be contrary to my values that has to do with high level morality. What have we discussed so far? Well, we started by exploring the concept of goals, of goal setting and other themes. We looked at some important benefits of goal setting. We looked at common mistakes to avoid in goal setting. We look at, um, looked at goal setting 101, uh, that is steps in goal setting. We also looked at life areas we need to set goals in before we now wrapped up with some habits or daily habits necessary for focus and goal getting. We now move on to the next to the next aspect of our conversation. I'm sure someone is asking, how do I ensure that my goals or my set goals are achieved? How do I ensure that my set goals are achieved? That takes us to the concept of personal mastery. Personal mastery. How do I ensure that my set goals are achieved? That takes us to the Oh, somebody asked if the comments from the um, comments um, section, from the chat section, someone just asked the question, is long-term goal setting still relevant considering the speed at which things change? Yes, it is still relevant. It is important to set a long-term goal, but you have to be open to correcting your course. As you move on, you have to be open to correcting your course because things will change. Yes, times are changing. People talk about um, the VUCA word that we are in, V-U-C-A. Things are changing rapidly. But if you don't set a long-term goal, it will be difficult for you to make adjustments. It is important to set long-term goals and keep adjusting as you go on. The trail, you know, with regard to adjusting your, 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 your goals cannot be of, uh, uh, quantified. You know, that's why it's important to set long-term goals and keep making corrections, keep making corrections till you reach um, that particular goal you've set or you reach that particular point you have set as your time limit for achieving that particular goal. Let's talk about personal mastery. Um, and before we talk about it, it's important we do a little um, SWOT analysis or we talk about SWOT analysis. Um, authors have different concepts that they always bring to bear when they talk about evaluating things. They talk about doing a SWOT analysis. They talk about doing a PEST analysis. They um, even talk about doing a PESTL analysis. That is um, looking at the political, economic, sociological, technological, le le legal, and environmental aspect of a thing before exploring it. And um, those ones, the, the PESTL analysis and the PEST analysis, they are majorly external, but the SWOT um, tend to be largely internal. We want to look at our strengths, we want to look at our weaknesses, we want to look at our opportunities, we want to look at our threats. I've touched on, touched on some of these things while talking about um, um, Go Setting 101. But it's important we ask ourselves these questions when it comes to a particular goal. Strengths, what am I good at? What skills do others recognize in me that I don't even recognize in myself? What do I do better than other people? What professional qualities or education do I have? We have to also look at our weaknesses. What do I not do so well? What can I improve? What are my negative work habits? What type of things do I avoid doing? Those are my weaknesses. And what I want to do is to turn my weaknesses into strengths. And then another thing I want to look at are the opportunities available to me. What new skills and education can I obtain? What can I make of my network? How can I highlight my strengths? How can I get more noticed? These are things we have to ask ourselves in terms of opportunities available to us. And then we also need to look our, at our threats. What and who may get in my way? Remember I talked about threats also and what to do with them. And, and um, Dr. Laja Adeshina also uh, mentioned things about evaluating our risks when it comes to threats. Does changing technology threaten your position? 
That's one question we want to ask ourselves. Recall during the COVID um, pandemic, we all went online. In fact, the, where I teach, we, 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 we did online for a session plus. Could any of your weaknesses lead to threats? Another question you might want to ask yourself. And what do you see as possible dangers in your professional life? These are some questions we want to ask ourselves. When it comes to personal mastery, according to Peter Senge, there are two key things we want to look at, personal growth and learning. According to him, he said in 2006, it's also important to highlight that he talked about personal mastery in his best-selling book um, titled The Fifth Discipline, yes, that he wrote in 1990 and then revised in 2006. There he talked about five different disciplines, including um, personal um, mastery and systems thinking, and he mentioned system thinking and other disciplines, system thinking as the fifth discipline. But our focus today is just personal mastery, personal mastery, where he talked about personal growth and learning. And according to him, learning in this context doesn't mean just acquiring more information, but expanding our ability to produce the results we want in life. He called it a lifelong generative learning. There's something we call PGIS. I evaluated this thing in Nigeria some time ago. I developed, I um, validated it in Nigeria some time ago. Personal growth initiative skill. We're not going to respond to the skill for time. We're not going to respond to the skill for time, but I'm going to mention some of those things so that you look at uh, the ones that resonate with you. This concept was brought, brought to the fore by Robin Steck, Christine Robin Steck. She um, described personal growth initiative as a person's active and intentional involvement in changing and developing. Uh, and developing as a person or as an individual. And he brought out about nine questions, which is validated in Nigeria. I know how to change specific things that I want to change in my life. I have a good sense of where I am headed in my life. If I want to change something in my life, I initiate the transition process. So if you are saying definitely agree or mostly agree or somewhat agree to some of these questions I have mentioned, it means we are making very good progress towards um, personal growth. Other questions within the personal growth sphere include, I can choose the role I want to have in a group. I know what I need to do to get started towards reaching my goals. I have a specific action plan to help me reach my goals. I can take charge of my life. I know what my unique contribution to the world might be, and I have a plan for making my life more balanced. These are some of the things I would like for us to explore um, maybe later on our own. How do we develop personal mastery? Well, according to Senge, first thing we want to do is to have a personal vision. So I want you to leave this interaction this afternoon with a sense of vision, telling yourself, I'm going to have a personal vision. Or if you already have a personal vision, as I know that some of us already do, just tell yourself, I'm going to look at this, my personal vision this January. That would be one thing that I want to sit on this January to see how I can project it to um, 2033, or 2043 or whenever, have a personal vision. And according to him, whenever we have this personal vision, it sort of drives us to achieve things we may not have been able to dream about achieving. Question is, what is your personal vision? Whenever we have a personal vision, something tend to crop up and he referred to it as creative tension. You are looking at your vision. I want to be the president of Nigeria. There is a tension. I want to be the president of Nigeria. Incidentally, okay, there is a hand up, Olusiji. I will take your question in a minute. Let me just uh, um, touch on this creative tension and this conflict that people tend to have in terms of um, personal mastery, creative tension. So you want, I want to be the president of Nigeria. All of a sudden, I am looking at my vision and then I'm looking at the current reality facing me. This is the 17th day of January. I can't be the president of Nigeria this dispensation again because we already know the people who are vying for that position, current reality and my vision. Now there is this tension, creative tension. There is excitement in me. 
there is this joy that I have in me that I want to achieve this particular vision or this goal that I have. But the current reality is telling me, sorry, it's not yet your turn. It's not yet your time. It creates a tension, creative tension. What do we do with this creative tension? And that is how we grow in personal mastery. What do we do with it? Well, some people now say, oh, oh, it's great. this tension that I don't know, I can't get to my, to my vision because I, I started out late or I can't get to my vision because they've already printed the ballot papers. I can't get to my vision because this has happened. Then it creates this emotional tension. What do I now go for? We now find a pressure to lower our vision. Oh, I can't be a president of Nigeria after all. I'm a president of the president of my home. And you know, my, my family, they are liking it. In my home, I'm the president. And that's good enough. That's lowering my grand vision of being the president of Nigeria. What do we do with creative tension? Most times people, when they have this creative tension, it sort of stops them from moving forward towards achieving their goal. It sort of, you know, gives them anxiety. It sort of makes them not to feel like moving forward. So it's either we adjust our goal or it sort of gives us the impetus to keep running towards that goal. We change a few things just to ensure that our current reality matches at some point with our, our vision that we have set for ourselves. And what else do we face at this point? We have our vision, we have the current reality, and there is this tension that we can't seem to break through. What begins to happen at this point is we begin to also have some other conflicts within us. These things are called structural conflicts. They are structures that have been set up maybe by the way we were raised, by the way we were socialized. And that is the belief in powerlessness, unworthiness. Who am I to compete for the presidency with all of the big weeks coming out? That creates tension. That feeling of unworthiness, I'm not able to compete, it creates another tension. So between our vision or our goal, this 2023, and the current reality that we are facing, we're going to continually have this unending tension. What do we do with this tension? Are we able to tweak things in order to help us to achieve our vision? Or are we going to fall under the pressure of lowering our vision in order to stop feeling this tension that we are experiencing? Some people, when they begin to feel this tension, they abandon the goal. Why? Because tension requires either resolution or release. Either you resolve it or you release it, you leave the field. It was Kurt Levin that talked about conflict. Avoidance, avoidance, conflict. What do you do? You leave the field. And most people have taken that path in life. But current writers have said, even if it's avoidance, avoidance, conflict, there are ways that you can resolve it. Then as we journey towards the path of developing self or personal mastery, it's important that we are committed to the truth. The truth that things will change. The truth that people will disappoint us. The truth that we are still within Nigeria. We have to be committed to the truth. The truth that sometimes, that although I've set a goal right now in this class of being the president of Nigeria, I cannot be the president of Nigeria in 2023 again. That commitment to the truth helps us appreciate reality. It helps us make adjustments. It helps us flow in line with what we have planned for ourselves. There is also another area as we try to develop personal mastery using our unconscious. This unconscious, if I begin to talk about it today, it's a different, like in fact, in psychology, it's a different area on its own because people have come up, it was Sigmund Freud who talked about the uh, pre-conscious, subconscious, uh, the pre-conscious, 
the unconscious and the conscious. But people always talk about the subconscious. The subconscious are the things that are not within our immediate mind. And sometimes the truth of life, the truth of life rests within that our unconscious. We have to begin to tap into our conscious if we want to achieve all the goals that we want to achieve this year. And people have come up with several ways of tapping into their unconscious, into the unconscious or their own unconscious illness, mindfulness, meditation, and so forth, tend to help people to tap into the unconscious. And then we also want to integrate reason and intuition. We want to see our connectedness to the world in terms of evolving through being compassionate and being committed to the whole instead of the sum of its parts. Peter Senge talked about the concept of system thinking. When we begin to think of things as a whole, it helps us to develop personal mastery as we move towards achieving our goal this particular year. Now, there are some tools that help us to enhance our personal mastery as we go towards achieving goals. The first one is journaling. It increases our self-confidence, as Jeremiah Say once mentioned. It helps us to look at how far we've come and how um, we overcame previous seemingly impossible obstacles. So I want to suggest that if we've not been journaling, that we try as much as possible to start journaling. And it helps us to hold ourselves accountable to our goals. Someone once said that a personal journal is an ideal environment in which to become. It is a perfect place for us to think, feel, discover, expand, remember, and of course, dream. What are the things that we achieve from it? Well, it tends to help us in meditation, tend to help us in expressing our thoughts and feelings, tend to help us in monitoring our progress and of course our goals and priorities. Another thing we want to look at as we move towards achieving our goals and developing self or personal mastery this year is lifelong learning. In psychology, we talk about learning as a relatively permanent change in behavior that our core as a result of experience. That is the only way we begin to change things. And Whitney once said that learning is by discipline, not by accident. So I want to encourage us to be more intentional this year in terms of the things we want to learn, in terms of things we want to integrate into ourselves. It was Henry Ford who once said that anyone, anyone who stops learning is old, whether at 20 or 80. Anyone that keeps learning, however, stays young. And the greatest thing in life is to keep your mind young through learning. And learning is a choice. The other thing we want to also do in order to enhance our personal mastery this year is to practice stillness and reflection. If you will, call it meditation. And people who are committed to um, continually develop personal mastery, they practice some form of meditation according to Peter Senge, that came up with this term, personal mastery. Whether it is through contemplative prayer or other methods of simply quieting the, the conscious mind. Our conscious mind is rambunctious. It is extremely noisy. So we have to quiet it through meditation. Once in a while, that's how we tap into our subconscious or even our unconscious mind. And to a large extent, People always refer to our subconscious or unconscious as an iceberg with the tip. That was what Sigmund Freud said, with the tip being the conscious. And in order to do um, these things, we can assess several tools, including visualization, imagery, and mental rehearsal. They help us work with our subconscious in order to achieve the personal vision that we have put together for ourselves. It was Deepak Chopra that once said, to make the right choices in life, you have to get in touch with your soul. To do this, you need to experience solitude, which most people are afraid of, because in silence, you hear the truth and know the solutions. As I wrap up, if you look at one of the slides I put on 
uh, I put up rather the bet by Anton Chekhov. It's a very short story, five pages. And I suggest that you kindly um, look it up online. Anton Chekhov, the Russian, um, the Russian writer, he talked about the bet where a young man, a young lawyer, took a bet with a banker that he would stay in solitary confinement for 15 years for 2 million rubles. When the 15th year, he came to the 15th year, the night that the bet was going to expire, the, the, the banker wanted to kill the young man because the young man had um, spent 15 years. The banker thought he was not going to be able to spend a year. As he entered the room to kill this man so that he wouldn't be able to pay the 25, sorry, the 2 million rubles that he promised. He now saw that the young man had written a letter. And within that letter, he told him that within these 15 years of quietness, reflection, and solitude, I have been able to learn six languages. I have been able to do a whole, whole lot. Learn how to do different things I would not have been able to learn. Therefore, this 2 million that you're going to pay me, I see it as nothing. And I will leave this room before the appointed time so as to break the agreement and you can take your money. Now, why did I say this? So the man didn't, of course, kill the an interesting story, didn't kill the young man. The young man just left with all of the knowledge that he has been able to acquire. I said this to say that when we are still, when we're in solitude, when we meditate, when we reflect, we assess certain knowledge that we would not be able to assess when we are noisy. What have we discussed so far? We started by exploring the concept of goals, goal setting, and other things. We looked at some important benefits of goal setting. We moved on to common mistakes to avoid in goal setting. Goal setting 101 was explored. Life areas we need to set goals in, daily habits necessary to, um, for focus and goal setting. We also discussed personal mastery, how to develop it, and we wrapped up with some tools for enhancing, enhancing personal mastery for goal setting, such as journaling, learning, and of course, stillness. Two things I want you to do with what we have shared this afternoon. One is to share the knowledge. Two is to lead with the knowledge. I wish you happiness. I wish you joy. And I wish you love this 2023. May all your goals be realized. Thank you for listening.